This is a Yamaha Natural Sound Stereo Receiver Model CR420. This was made in 1977 until about 1979, and it was the second model from the bottom of Yamaha's receiver line. And Yamaha made a big deal about all of their receivers from the CR420 to the 620 to the 820 to the 1020, and then the 2020, all of them had the same total harmonic distortion. And a lot of other brands, they did it differently where their less expensive models did not have as good of specifications as the high-end models. So I'm gonna walk through and show you how all the controls are laid out on this unit and how they work. So starting at the top here, you've got an FM tuning dial. And that does double duty as an FM tuning center of channel meter and then an AM signal meter. And you'd use that to try to tune in your FM station as best that you could. And then you've got an FM dial here with a lighted indicator bar when the unit's turned on. And that would show you what frequency that you were tuning into. And a lot of people are used to digital readouts now, but they didn't have those in the 1970s for the most part. And then over here to the right, you have an FM LED and an FM stereo LED and then an AM LED to tell you what band you were on and whether or not you were getting FM stereo. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing on and it takes a couple seconds and you'll hear a speaker relay kick in. And you have a, a, a small light bulb for the tuning dial and there's also a light bulb that illuminates that right there. So going down through the rest of the controls, you've got a bass control that has a flat setting right there in the center and the red dot shows you where you're at. And then there's five little clicks that you can go down to decrease the bass. And then you can do the same thing to increase the bass. And most of the time you'd want that at flat. And you have the same thing for treble. Now the higher end units in this line would have a presence control also, which is their mid range but this unit only has bass and treble. And then you have the Yamaha continuously variable loudness control. Most other receivers and amplifiers in the 1970s and even nowadays only have a loudness button. And what loudness is supposed to do is if you wanna turn your volume down a little bit, you can hit that loudness button and it will boost the low end and the high end a little bit so it still sounds decent at a lower volume compared to how it would sound at a higher volume without the loudness control engaged. And that's how it works with a loudness button. But Yamaha does it differently. And so what Yamaha tells you to do in the manual, and, and it works just like they say, is you should set the volume control to the highest level that you normally like to listen to. And then if you wanna dial back the volume a little bit, like maybe it's late at night, you turn the loudness control, it starts off at flat, and you turn it to the left. And as you do that, it decreases the overall volume. So you basically use this as your volume control. And that's different than a lot of people think that it works. So make sure you don't get confused about that. And then right here, you've got a rec out selector and what that lets you do, and this is another unique Yamaha feature, is that you could be listening to one thing, whatever is on the input selector, that's what you're gonna be listening to through your speakers or your headphones. But with the rec out selector, if you had a cassette deck or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder connected to this, you could be recording off of the tuner from a radio station and recording that to a cassette while you were listening to a record. So whatever was set as the rec out was, would be whatever was going to whatever you're recording to. And a lot of people sometimes get a little confused between the input selector, which is what you're gonna hear through the speakers, and the rec out selector, which controls what's actually being recorded if you've got a cassette deck recorder or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, for example. So that's how those work. And on the input selector, you've got a tape input. So normally that would have been a cassette deck in the 1970s, but it could have been a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And then you've got a tuner that you can listen to. And again, it's FM or AM. 
And then you've got a phono input. So if you've got a turntable that has a phono out jack rather than line out inputs, you would use that. And then you had an auxiliary jack right here. And that was for maybe another tape deck or something else. And nowadays, if you're listening to vintage audio equipment, it's very common to plug a CD player or a Super Audio CD player or Blu-ray player or a streaming device into that aux jack. So that's what that's for. And then right over here is your volume control, and it's got two parts. This part, which is turned all the way down right now, is your actual volume. And then behind it with a little notch right there is your balance control. And then you've got the tuning knob right here for whatever band you're listening to, whether it's FM or AM. And going down, you have an FM muting button. And on Yamaha receivers, the way that works is that you've got to have the FM muting button turned on, which is it is on right now, to get FM stereo. And if you turn it off, notice how that FM stereo button or LED turns off. So you've got to turn that back on. And what FM muting was designed to do is if you're tuning between stations, you're going to hear static between the stations. And if you turn on FM muting, it gets rid of that static and it also keeps really weak, poor quality uh, stations that are far away from coming in if you've got FM muting turned on. So you would want to have FM muting turned on to listen to strong local stations. And if you're trying to listen to a station that was far away, you'd want to turn FM muting off. Another thing you would do that was related to that is right here. You've got a stereo and mono button switch. So if the FM station you were trying to listen to was pretty weak and the quality was not very good, you could turn it from stereo mode to mono mode and that would make it sound a lot better usually, but you would lose the stereo effect. So that was sort of a judgment call you had to make. And then right here is the tuner button between AM and FM. And then here is a high filter. And what that does when you turn it on is it attenuates the high frequency a little bit. And where you would usually use that is if you had, again, a weak FM station and it was had a lot of hiss at the high end, you could turn on the high filter and that would usually make that sound better. And then moving over to the left, you've got two sets of speakers that you can have attached to this. And you can turn them both on or either one, A or B. And most people, if you had a modest setup, would probably just have one pair of speakers connected to A. And then Yamaha's from this line had two headphone jacks. And these are the old quarter inch headphone jacks that you don't see very often anymore. People are more used to a much smaller three millimeter jack. But the way these work is a little bit different than what you might be used to because normally on more modern equipment, if you plug in your headphones, it turns off the speaker output automatically. But on these Yamahas, it doesn't work that way. And you had two headphone jacks here, so you could have two sets of headphones plugged into this. And when you plug in that, it does not turn off the speaker. You've got to turn it off yourself if you want to turn the speakers off. And then, of course, again, here is the power button. So that's basically how all the controls work. And this particular unit was rated at 22 watts per channel, which seems really low, and that's into eight ohms. But Yamaha was very, very conservative with their amplifier power ratings. And Audio Magazine, which was a big deal back in the 1970s, when they tested this unit in 1978, they found out that it probably really should have been rated at 31 watts per channel into eight ohms. So it actually puts out a decent amount of power, and unless your speakers are really hard to drive and very inefficient, you can get a lot of, of volume out of this relatively modest unit here. And this thing cost $290 MSRP in 1977, and that's the equivalent of $1,458 in 2023. And so this was a, a pretty big investment. And back in the 1970s, this was before the internet and before people had computers and cell phones. And this was a, a very common way of kind of entertaining yourself and friends. You would buy a nice stereo system and have it in your living room and listen to it by yourself or with friends. And it was a large investment. And people had very large record collections and large cassette 
collections and they listen to music a lot, you know, or they might watch TV, but you didn't have as many things to easily entertain yourself as you do nowadays. And now vintage stereo equipment is becoming much more popular. And so units like this would probably sell for three to four hundred dollars now in decent condition if everything works. And Yamaha is not as popular as some other brands like Marantz and Pioneer and Sansui, for example. You know, they have vintage equipment from the same era that typically costs two, three, four times as much as an equivalent Yamaha unit. And Yamaha had very clean lines here, and they didn't have as many bells as wh and whistles as some of the other brands did, so they're not as popular with people now. But personally, I like Yamaha better. And Yamaha entered the audio market a little bit later than some of the other brands. They'd been making musical instruments and and things of that nature for a long time, but they really didn't get into hi-fi until the late 1960s, early 1970s. And so they approached it a little bit differently than some of the other brands.